Psalm 19 verse 1. All the way to verse 3. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech. And night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech. There is no language where their voice is not heard. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. This evening, I speak on the subject, lessons of destiny. Lessons of destiny. Our objective is to understand how destiny is molded by lessons. How the things you become in life are molded by the things you learn. Lessons of destiny. The Bible said, all of life is speaking. Day unto day, utter speech. Night unto night, showeth knowledge. He said, there is no speech, no language where their voice is not heard. The meaning is, you don't need to speak a particular language to learn the lessons of destiny. You don't need to be of any particular tribe. Whether you speak English or you speak Spanish or you speak French or you speak German or you speak Ibibio or Efik or Igala or Idoma or Hausa or Yoruba or Igbo or Anan. Whatever you speak. Life. Destiny lessons abound. And you can hear it in your mother tongue. Four things we will note before we pick on the lessons. Number one. What you know determines what you choose. What you know determines what you choose. Decisions are products of knowledge and understanding. What you know determines what you choose. People make choices on the basis of what they know. For example, what somebody knew regarding the wife he married was the reason why he married that wife. Later on, he got to know some things and began to regret. If I had known that this is how you are, or the husband as the case may be, I wouldn't have married you. What you know determines what you choose. Second, what you choose determines how you act. Choices are the fuel for action. What you choose determines how you act. What you choose determines how you behave. Nobody stole by choice. Nobody, sorry, nobody robbed by accident. Nobody stole by accident. They made the choices and then put forth the action. What you choose determines how you act. What you choose determines how you behave. And thirdly, How you behave determines what you become. How you behave determines what you become. That is where destiny comes in. How you behave 
determines what you become. This is the equation. Actions determine habit. Habit determines character. And character determines destiny. Actions will determine your actions repeated will form your habit. Habit established equals character. Character confirmed equals destiny. Repeated actions form habit. Habit that is established forms character. And character confirmed equals destiny. The ICT, I heard people say you should leave some of the information on the screen for them for a while so they can follow and catch up in case they missed it. Actions determine habit. Habit determines character. And character determines destiny. Now, all of this started with something you know. What you know. What you know. Determines what you choose. Then what you choose determines how you act or behave. And how you act or behave determines what you become, which is destiny. So it started with what you know. And these things are what we call the lessons of destiny. There are different sources of these lessons. Different sources of what we know that can shape our lives and shape what we become. When you see two people, maybe they have similar background and similar opportunities and possibilities. And they, did, and they don't end the way they should end. They don't end at the same area of life. It means that certain lessons were not learned. Certain choices were not made. Certain behaviors were not put forth. And so, they couldn't end the same way. What are these various lessons or various sources of our knowledge that can influence our choices and influence our actions and influence our future? The first one, number one is lessons from the past. And when I say past, I am referring to your own particular past. Lessons from your past. They form lessons of destiny. The lessons from the past include lessons from missed opportunities. Opportunity you missed. That you kept regretting. What did you learn from it? If you were confronted with similar opportunities in the future. What will you do differently? It's lessons from missed opportunities. Also second. Lessons from past mistakes and errors. Mistakes and errors. Your mistakes, your errors are facts. They were not problems, they were facts. They are no longer problems, they are reality, they are facts. And you don't deny the fact. You accept the fact and use the fact of the past to change the future. Lessons from past mistakes and errors. They also include lessons from negative occurrences. In the past, in your life, negative occurrences. Maybe that man wouldn't have taken advantage of you if you had behaved or acted differently and vice versa. Also, they include lessons from positive occurrences of the past. Certain things happened well in the past. 
that you can leverage on for the future. You learn from them. That was what Laban said in Genesis chapter 30 verse 27. He told Jacob, I have learned by experience. And, and Laban said unto him, I pray you, if I have found favor in your eyes, tarry. For I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. I learned. My, the experience of my past with you shows that Jacob, if you remain with me, I will be a better person. We learn positive from the positive events of the past. Please take note of the following concerning this point. First, that it is those who learn from the past that lead in the future. When people are able to learn from the past, they are able to lead in the future. Also, secondly, until you learn beyond where you are, you don't go beyond where you are. Until you learn beyond where you are, you don't go beyond where you are. Very, very important. Even though I'm going to come to lessons from history, but let me say this. Third, that those who fail to learn from history most definitely repeat history. And this is your personal history. The reason why that relationship did not work, if you didn't learn from it, another relationship won't work. Those who don't learn from history most definitely repeat history. So this is lesson of destiny number one is lessons from your past. Second lesson is lessons from the present. Lessons from the present. We already read it. That was our text in Psalm 19, verse 1 to 3. Day unto day, the heavens declare your glory, the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Day unto day, uttereth speech, and night unto night, showeth knowledge. What is the meaning? First, the universe is a university. Second, life is a library of lessons. The universe is a university. Life is a library of lessons. Third, until the lessons of life are learned, progress in life is never made. Until the lessons of life are learned, progress in life is never made. Because it is one thing to have eyes. It is another thing to see what life is showing. And it is one thing to have ears. But it is another thing to hear what life is saying. Eyes that see, that look are plenty. But eyes that see are few. Eyes that hear are many. But eyes that listen are few. Yes. In Proverbs chapter 24, verse 30, we read it some time back. We this, the, 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 Solomon was saying, I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles had covered the face thereof and the stone wall was broken down. Then I said, I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it. I received instruction. What was the instruction? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep 
so shall your poverty come as one who travels and your want as an armed man. These are the lessons from the present. While you are driving on the road, you saw something, you learned. At the airport, your eyes are looking at things you are learning and you are writing. In this situation now, you are learning. Please take note of the fourth point I will make. That life easily passes a person by who doesn't know what life is revealing. When you say life has passed him by, it means that the things he is meant to be seen and hearing is never seen anything. Life easily passes a person by who doesn't know what life is revealing. He's not aware. What are we learning from life? Three basic things. Informations and instructions for progress. Next, positive principles to live by. And third, actions to change. Instructions, informations for progress, positive principles to live by, actions to change. As you, you, you pass by, you watch things, you see things, you, you are changing. That is number two. Source of our knowledge. It's lessons from the past, lessons from the present, and these lessons include the information and the instructions for progress, positive principles to live by, actions to change. Number three, source of our lesson is lessons from confrontation. From confrontations. Lessons from confrontations. Micah chapter 7 verse 8. He said, rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. Now the B part is very important. Even when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. So inside every night, there is a light. Note, the, note, note it down as information. Note first. Inside every night, there is a light. In case your life appears to be overwhelmed with what looked like a night of life, there is a light to, to see. He said, even when I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be light. There is something the light, the night is saying. Second, you have heard this over and over. It's a very popular saying. Every mess has a message. The situation appears messy. Like what we find ourselves in the world now. There is a message. Third, every frustration carries instruction. This situation, everything here just looks so frustrating. There is an instruction there to avoid the frustration next time. Thought. Every problem carries a promise. Goliath was a problem, but for David it was a promise. And fifth is a quote by Benjamin Franklin. He says, the things that hurt instruct. Everywhere there is a hurt, there is an instruction. Those things that hurt instruct. Out of the pain can come the pen. Something to pen. You know, in the, bat in, in the battles of David, David learned so many lessons in the battles, in the battles he fought. 
one of the lessons I believe David learned is don't use what you have not proved. When he tried to carry the armor of Saul in 2 Samuel chapter 17 verse 38 to 39, he was trying to move with the armor of Saul. He could not move. I think David must have learned that lesson. Don't use what you haven't proved. Prove it to use it. I think he also learned that the armor of Saul cannot win the battles of David. That is, you use your armor to win your battle. I think he also learned that for as long as you have his command, you will be in command. Because for every battle, David received instructions from God. What should I do? God will say, pursue, overtake. First Samuel chapter 30 verse 8. As long as you are in touch with his command, you must be in command. I'm sorry I didn't itemize the lessons of David. It's a message of his own. In case you want to put it down, you could. That first, David learned first, don't use what you have not proved. To use it, first prove it. And then, that the armor of Saul may not handle the battle of David. And then, that for as long as you have his command, you are in command. One thing I think that David must have learned is that it is better to be addicted to his commandment than to be married to methods. Because there may be a different instruction for the same enemy at a different occasion. David was confronted by the same Philistines twice in rapid and the instruction changed in 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse 17 to 25. We may not have the time to read it. The issue is it's not that God caused the problem but that there is a situation around you you make the devil pay for it. By learning everything that must be learned. By taking maximum advantage of what was meant to bring you hurt or pain. Lessons from, from history. This is not your own personal his past now, but history generally. What we know from history. Take note of the three things I want to say. First, history exists so that positive principles can be embraced and negative principles can be avoided. What happens in history? When we see things, history, the history of our family line, our parental lineage, history of our country, history of our land and so on and so forth. They exist so that positive principles can be embraced and negative principles can be avoided. Second, people become history while they are alive when they fail to learn from history. A person becomes outdated, outmoded, antiquated. He is still alive, but his history is forgotten when they fail to learn from history. Thirdly, lessons from history fuel progress in the present. When we learn from history, progress in the present is fueled. That was what happened to Daniel. He read the book of the prophet Jeremiah who existed before him. And learn from history. He said in Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. He said in the first year of his reign. I Daniel understood by books. The number of years. 
whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Which means he read the book of prophet Jeremiah, a history book, book of the, the word that communicated the history of his people and realized that it was time for the captivity to be terminated. And then he began to pray and intercede to push it into happening. And he was quoting Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 10. Where Jeremiah mentioned that the Israelites would be in captivity for 70 years. And Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 11 to 12. He understood by those books, by those writings. And as a result of the lessons from history, he was able to fuel progress in the present. Those who succeeded, why did they succeed? And those who failed, why did they fail? Lessons from history. That was number four. Lesson that can influence your destiny. Number five, lessons from the successful. Basically, the secrets of the successful, the principles of the successful. What did they do and what are their personal life's principles? So those basic things from the successful. What are the secrets of the successful? What are the principles of the successful? Two basic things. In, in every field there are successful people. Every realm. And like Dr. Maurice Aruno said, all truths are parallel. Take note of the following quotes or statements. One, a wise man said, I think it was Isaac Newton. He said, if I have seen any brighter, it is by standing on the shoulders of those who have gone before me. If I see brighter, it's because I stood on the shoulders of those who went before me. Second, God's servant Bishop Yedepo said, I paraphrased it. You can't take the steps of giants and die as a dwarf. It's not possible. You cannot take the steps of giants and die as a dwarf. You can't take steps after giants and die as a dwarf. Then I said this thought. What to you is a future destination? Is someone's current position. For you, that is where you are looking forward to. For him, that is where he is. Also note, what to you is a possibility is someone's else, someone else's reality. For you, this could be possible. For him, it is real. What is the wisdom? The wisdom is to learn what took him to that destination. And the wisdom is to learn what gave him that reality. But we have an arrogant generation. An arrogant generation. A generation who see the successful as their problem. <laughs> Very arrogant. They are lucky. Or they may have done some dubious things. No, sir. Not everybody successful is crooked. There is neat success. Job neatly succeeded. Abraham, Joseph, and many people currently in this generation. Neat. Arrogant generation. And people antagonize what they cannot comprehend. <laughs> and what you hate, you can't have. What you attack, you can't attract. And attacking the successful does not delete your failure. Please, humble yourself. Pastor, you see some ahead of you. Learn from them. Don't join those who throw stones. Whatever you are, lessons 
from the successful can bring you into that realm of success and beyond. <laughs> a wise man said, I am ready to go anywhere provided it be forward. That is, anybody can teach me. I don't care who the person is provided that instruction will take me forward. Lessons from the successful. Very, very important. Number six, I, 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 I'm sure I... Okay. Ma'am? Lessons from the successful. In the book of Judges chapter 7 verse 7. Seventeen, sorry. And he said unto them, look on me and do likewise. Look on me, Gideon. Successful warrior, do likewise. As I do, do. Yes. There are people that you look at, learn from. Lessons from the successful. Number six. Lessons from the unsuccessful. <laughs> and somebody is asking, unsuccessful? I, want, I, just, I, want, I just wanted to be polite and, and not say lesson from failures. Lesson from the unsuccessful. What are you learning? Reasons for their failure. Are you learning? How not to run life. I can tell you, you learn as much from the successful as you learn from the unsuccessful. You learn, you can learn almost the same volume from the successful as well as the unsuccessful. Matthew chapter 23, verse 1 to 3. Matthew 23, verse 1 to 3. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Anything they ask you to do, observe. And observe and do, but don't follow after their works. For they say and do not. The principles they are communicating are correct. But their life is wrong. Learn from them. I, I mean, there are some unsuccessful people. Who will actually tell you, these are the steps I took that crushed me. Please don't. They will tell you, they can tell you that. One of our, I heard from God's servant, Bishop Uedipo, how someone told him. He said, I took one step in life, just one step. And everything I labored for finished. One step. That was very instructive. Man, very impactful, very famous, very, very hard momentum. One step. Lessons from the unsuccessful. I told you the funny story of... Um, when I was growing up as a young man, I saw a man, they called him manager, on the road we used to follow to a particular place. He used to, he, he, he sold uh, pepper soup and um, some local things like that. But every time you are passing, his mouth will be moving. <laughs> he was the first, bene the major beneficiary of what he was selling. After a while, there was no shop anymore. <laughs> no business. He ate it up. He ate it up. <laughs> so if you like meat, don't sell meat. <laughs> or let another person sell it for you. <laughs> when I was growing up as a child, I followed one man to assist him. In what he was selling something. And somebody overpaid 
us. I ran to him and said, ah, this person paid over. He said, stop. What are you talking about? This is, as far as he was concerned, it was his favor. He was happy to be overpaid. Without returning it to the owner. That guy crashed, nose dive to zero and didn't leave. So you, 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 you learn from the unsuccessful. Not two things. In your journey of life, try not to make the same mistake once. That was a counsel somebody gave to somebody. He said, don't make the same mistake once. And the question is, you are talking of the same mistake once. People say, don't make the same mistake twice. This one says, don't make the same mistake once. Meaning, when you saw what crushed another person, don't, don't allow the same thing to crush you. When the person in front of you enter the pit, don't say, let me just, let me keep on going because we are together. Let the mistake of one be the lesson for another. And secondly, failure is a habit and success is a habit. I came across that many years ago. There are habits that make failures. So you can learn it. You watch it, you learn it. Growing up, some of the things I learned was how marriage, how, mar how not to operate marriage. I learned that as a child. How not to operate marriage. I have also learned how not to do ministry. If you want ministry to fail, follow this path. If you want marriage to fail, do it like this. So you learn from the unsuccessful. The, the, how, what made them unsuccessful. You learn it to avoid it. Lessons from the unsuccessful. Number seven is lesson, lessons from parents. Proverbs chapter one, verse eight to nine. He said, my son, hear the instruction of your father and forsake not the law of your mother. For there shall be an ornament of grace unto your head and chains about your neck. Lessons from father, lessons from mother, lessons from father, from even grandfather, grandmother. My mother talked all the time about the things her grandmother taught her. Weighty lessons. That produced her as a quality entity in her generation. That made her produce quality offsprings from the same passing down of instructions. Quality. God's servant Bishop Yedeko said that he learned tithing from his grandmother. He said that he learned to hard work from his grandmother. When you go into a city, he says, his mother says, sit down. And face what took you to that city. He says, his grandmother said, those who sell oil don't play with fire. He learned many, many of those kind of things. And, and, and he didn't know how it, eventually it, it became applicable to ministry. Don't look at your father's wealth. Make your own money. <laughs> so a lesson. Please note, if you are a child watching, hear these proverbs first. He said, what a parent stands. I'm sure you've heard it before. On the ground level and sees. A child can't see it climbing up an Iroko tree. If a child climbs an Iroko tree, he can't see it. He can't. In Yoruba, they said, a child may boast of new dresses. But cannot beat the parents in the possession of old clothes. <laughs> you have new clothes and you are bragging. Your parents have clothes that may be as old as your age. 
And in the East, it is said, the okra can never be taller than its owner. The owner will pull it down and, 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 be, and still pluck the okra. Our generation of youth say times have changed. Yes, times change, but truth never changes. Truth is durable. Whatever made people quality people a hundred years ago will produce quality people today. Truth never changes. Time is changeable, but truth is durable. Listening to parents has been a very, very major plus. Listen. In case your parents have nothing in the area of morals to give you, there is still something to learn. How not to be a parent. Maybe you have a craving as a child that your parents cannot fulfill. Or there is a way, you, something you desire from parents that is not a possibility, I mean legitimate. You are, you are now learning what to do for your children. You are in that process learning how to bring up your children. You learn how not to parent. You learn and determine not to reproduce their failure. You are learning what to do for your own children. And parents, please note that your influence on those children, you will give account of it before God. I tell parents, I said, the way you and your wife are quarreling, husband and wife, wife and husband, is that what you want your children to reproduce? What, what, what are you showing them of how a home should be? I met a man many years ago. Some year, we talked some time ago. He's, he's, he's within this commission. And I was trying to talk to him about his mom. And he said, sir, that woman, no mortal human being can live with her. He was talking about a mother that is almost like quarrel in motion. What a testimony of a child for a mother. No human being can live with that woman. Of course, there's no, there's no marriage. No, no, no marriage. No mortal. What will your children say about you? Husband, wife, father, mother. Bear that in mind. Because whether you like it or not, whether they are learning what to do or what not to do using your life, they are watching. In case you say, Pastor, I didn't have any parent. No father, no mother. There is no father like God. There is no mother like God. And that is why at times we have the opportunity of spiritual parents. You learn from them. And what God will teach you, no father can teach you. And no mother can teach you. Lessons from parents. Children of this generation, it is not fashionable to be rebellious. It is profitable to be obedient. It has profited us. It profited those before us. It's still profiting people. Don't let your friends mentor you. Don't let your age mates be the voice that give you direction. They can't give you anything higher than the wisdom they possess. Be connected to higher wisdom. And nobody can give you an advice that is as quality as one who loves you with passion. One who has your interest at heart. Children, bear this in mind. Number eight is lesson from spiritual parents. Or you can't, yeah. Lessons from your priest or prophet. Put it as spiritual parents. <clears throat> Acts chapter 4 and in verse 13, the Bible said, When, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 20. He said, 
No. 15, sorry. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Spiritual parents are custodians of spiritual light and insight. What do you glean? First, the principles of the word. Second, the examples of their own lives. Where those examples are positive. Third, road map to destiny. And fourth, secrets of triumph in life. This comes to you from this table of your spiritual family. The principles of the world, like you are hearing now. Examples of their own lives. When most of our pastors and prophets or priests minister to us, at times they tell the story of how this happened and how they did this, what the steps they took and things they did that brought them here or there. Their examples become our principles. From my own spiritual priesthood, I learned several things. Financial principles, personal financial principles and management. Personal ministerial principles. You learn the principles of the world, the examples in their own life. So when you are being told a story in the course of a preaching, don't say, oh, it is just a story. It's, it's principles that are being communicated. Roadmap to destiny, secrets of triumph. Lessons from spiritual parents. That was number eight. Number nine, lessons from the world. I am placing some of the most critical towards the end. Lessons from the world. Lessons from the world. Lessons from the Bible. Jer um, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then... Thou shalt make your way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. This book of the law, this book of the law, this book of the law. Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3, Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3, he said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. What do you learn from the world? Number one, principles of the kingdom. Number two, the knowledge of your maker. Number three, principles of right and wrong. Or understanding of right and wrong. This is right, this is wrong. Principles of the kingdom, the knowledge of your maker. Understanding of right and wrong. Number four, secrets of victory in life. If I am to live victoriously, how do I live? And my life is not to be a battleground. Number five, principles of success. Principles of successful living. And number six, decision-making process. You see in scripture, the process, how 
Jesus arrived at several things he did. You just, you just let. Now, I saw something today in scripture that, even though I've been reading the Bible for a long time, it appeared I never saw it. After Jesus multiplied bread in John chapter 6 from verse 5, uh, after he multiplied the bread from verse 11 and 12, in around verse 15 thereabout, he says he perceived that the people would come and take him by force to make him a king. He disappeared again into a mountain himself alone. He disappeared into a mountain. I don't know whether the disciples were aware of where he went or not. But they wanted to make him king. I think I'll leave that for another day altogether. They wanted to crown him. And he preferred that <laughs> I cannot receive the crown of man and lose the crown of God. And he disappeared. And he showed me that whenever the applause is great, the, is, the, the, the best thing to do is to just disappear for a while and be with him. But the Bible says the disciples went to the seashore and took <laughs> around evening, let's say six o'clock, and took sheep by themselves to go to the other side. The master wasn't with them. He didn't say, go. He went to the mountain to pray. Instead of them waiting, or even say, Lord, what are we to do? They carry sheep by themselves to cross to the other side. From six o'clock in the evening, they storm. A journey that would have been 30 minutes, they were there from six in the evening till the fourth watch of the night, 4 a.m. About 10 solid hours. Battling with the storm. Then in the fourth watch, Jesus came walking on top of the water towards them. You will be shocked, and I'm rushing because of time. They thought it was a ghost. They said, No, I'm not a ghost. I am the one. The Bible said they willingly accepted him into the ship, and immediately the ship was on land. Look at them. Then they willingly received him into the ship. Journey of 10 hours that couldn't be solved. Immediately, the moment he entered the ship, it was translocated. It landed. It was, it was, it was transpirited. It evaporated. And I realized. Don't make the journey of life. Without his direction and presence. Only thing you will encounter is the storm. Now, but somebody said, but when he was with them, storm had happened before. Yes, when he was with them, when the storm appeared, he died on the spot. He stood in the middle of the storm and said, peace be still. The journey continued. This one, he wasn't there. He didn't give them any word. They were on their own. So they had to battle the storm for about 10 hours. Before he arrived. Those are the kind of lessons. That the book gives you. That makes you not to be careless with your life. And just take steps anyhow. Lessons. From the world. And finally. Lessons. From the spirit. This is where the Holy Ghost is showing you things that you are not seeing. Giving you directions or steps to take. Lessons from the Spirit. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. Thus say the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way and walk therein. And you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk there. Stand, find out. Let me show you what to do. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. But as many as are led. Romans 8 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Where the Holy Spirit is teaching you things. Precept upon precept, line upon line. 
Most times the teachings of the Holy Spirit will be anchored in two or three basic things. First, the avoidance of disaster. He shows you move, move off. Second is direction for acceleration. This is the way to go. The instructions of the spirit. And third is the establishment of divine plan. This is what God wants to do with your life. This is the person to marry. This is where to live. This is the work to do. Helps you to avoid disaster. Gives you acceleration so your life can move forward. And then establishes you in the will of God. Those ten lessons are lessons that destiny teach you. And by the time you learn them well, you will become who God wants you to be. Lessons from the past, from your past. Lessons from the present. Lessons from confrontations. Lessons from history. Lessons from the successful. Lessons from the unsuccessful. Lessons from parents. Lessons from spiritual parents. Lessons from the word. Lessons from the spirit. Please go on and learn them. And you will have no regrets on this journey of life. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Stand up on your feet and let's appreciate him. Appreciate him everywhere you are. Honor him, adore him, worship him, magnify him. Mesto freto sinagalalabrayada.